Wilmer, and this is my second episode of Let's Play 30 Years War, an age-odd title about the 30 Years War, 1618 to 1648, and it, the two main protagonists are the Catholics and the Protestants, and I am playing the Catholics, the Holy Roman Empire, which was ruled by a Catholic and mostly Catholic, although there were plenty of Protestants living within the Holy Roman Empire, obviously, because that's how a lot of this got started and so let's go ahead and resume the game take a look at where I left it off from and um, I, I had a couple of people uh, well just one person really mentioned my computer it, it seems like it's doing pretty well and my mouse is actually working a little bit better too because I moved the the uh, part that plugs into the USB port the little the wireless part I moved it to another USB port and I think it's going to work a lot better so um, yeah I'm really really excited I took a day off and watched some uh, American college football and my favorite team won so I'm pretty excited about that uh, and I'm pretty excited about playing out this game now a couple of people on the forums have said that these sides aren't very balanced and that's a little disappointing but that does not mean I'm going to stop my let's play and I'm sure that the developers will introduce something to make it a little bit more balanced because in real life it was a lot more balanced uh, a lot of people uh, in the comments I don't I don't know one way or the other but a lot of people have said that the Protestants kind of sort of came out the better at the end of this 30 years war because the Holy Roman Empire was weakened and several of the Protestant uh, groups got more more land and even France I think uh, benefited a little bit out of the 30 years war which they are they were a Catholic country but they were and Tom, Tom Flamang kind of corrected me a little bit on this. They weren't necessarily opp opportunistic. It was just more of a, they could see that the Holy Roman Empire was getting more and more powerful, especially with its, uh, you know, close connection with Spain. And they were getting a little afraid because they were starting to get a little surrounded. I don't know that afraid would be the right word, but cautious. And they wanted to kind of whittle the HRE down a little bit so that they weren't facing off against a very formidable foe on almost either side of them. You know, Spain's to the south of France, and of course, Holy Roman Empire was to the to the east of France. So they really they really wanted to uh, kind of weaken that alliance, kind of weaken the Holy Roman Empire, and uh, so they came out of the. 30 years war in a little bit better shape than they went in and some of the things some of the videos I've watched and some of the reading I've done say that it positioned France to be the the fairly big power on the continent for the next couple of centuries or so or or maybe just one century I'm sure somebody will let me know if I, I misspoke on that but let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing here I have I had just bought an artillery unit and it was bought in Vienna and I'm moving it to Linz to join up with General Bacoy, the Bacoy Army and we've fought several battles with this force and we've won most of them. We lost the initial battle with them but we've won every one of the battles since then and it's just not a very strong force and so when this artillery unit gets to here I think I'm actually going to split this up and leave Dampier General Dampier with maybe one or two other units to protect Lens and the rest of the troops I'm going to take and go after Pilsen because it's a uh, an objective city because of its wealth and I can't afford to lose any wealth so that is my planning there's not really too much else going on F1 see I don't really have any other armies I just have a lot of 
garrisons F2. It's still early in the war. Uh, my replacement units, uh, what I need for replacements is a little lacking. As you can see, I'm in the red on every one of these. And I'm actually in the red on this one as well. And that's because you buy replacements using money. Imagine that. And war supplies. Imagine that. And we're running low on both of them. I'm surprised it's at 9. Changes from units replacements. Oh, I bought a lot of replacements. That's why. 9 is... I um, wonder what happens if I run out of money. I'm sure it's not a good thing. So, anyway. F5. F6. I might not have should have bought that um, artillery unit. I think I was at 13 when I bought it. And it cost 4. Which is probably not the best idea. That I've come up with in these games. Um, as you can see. And as I mentioned before in my other Let's Plays. The baseline for combat power is the player's uh, faction. So I'm basically, I'm 100% com combat power related to the Protestants in there. They have half the combat power that I have, which you would think that means that it's uh, pretty much guaranteed for me to win, but this is a 30 years war, and throughout the war, Nations join in, other nations join in, Spain joins in, Denmark joins in, Sweden joins in, France joins in, uh, some of the other larger uh, German states join in that are not necessarily, a, you know, they're not really autonomous in the, in the full sense. They're supposed to be part of the Holy Roman Empire, but... In the real sense, they probably are autonomous uh, states like Bavaria and Saxony basically do whatever they want to do. And Saxony, uh, I think, historically joined the Protestants, and Bavaria historically joined the Catholics and the Holy Roman Empire in their struggle. So we're on turn. Um, I think this started in January of 1619 so this is our will be our fourth turn I might be wrong on that it might have started a little earlier than that because it seems like I've run more than three turns but I just can't really remember to be honest with you I'd have to go back and watch my previous uh, episode and I don't really feel like doing that so that is that for now I don't really have the money to do anything. These are the regional decision cards and I don't really have the money to do any of these but at some point this is good. This is actually well it, it doesn't show any it doesn't show any region that I can play that on so I guess I'm not going to be using that. its cost 5 EPs and 20 victory points well I have the costs so I guess I'm, I'm just not able to use that scorched earth now why would I do scorched earth in Vienna which I own but I'm not saying every decision is the smart decision, of course. And this was the unit. This is the, the buy screen. You can buy any one of these four units. And I guess at the beginning of 1620, more units might become available to be bought. So at this time, I don't really have the money to buy any. And for messages I read through these at the end of my last episode so I'm not going to go through them there's only three of them it's not that big of a deal so let's go ahead and save this turn and actually you 
Yeah, let's go ahead and say let's go ahead and let him rest for a little while. His supply is, is way down and his power is down. Let's see if we can't get a, a little bit of that up. So, this is the uh, execute turn, and it's a 30-day turn, So, but they go really fast. As you can tell, it's whipping right through it. Now, as other people have mentioned, they're not sure how quickly these turns will execute. They're not sure how quickly these turns will execute later on in the game when there are more units on the field, but... I, from experience, I don't think that this game will tax the Ajod engine too you know, harshly. So I don't think that the the turns will take too long. That really, in my opinion, and I don't have a top of the line computer. I have a um, an older. It's a quad core 2.8 with a AMD uh, 6570, which is pretty low end on the on the uh, graphics side at on in these days and I think I have eight megabytes of RAM but um it doesn't tax my computer hardly at all so these these I don't expect these turns to get uh, too long to uh, take to execute so let's see what we want to do now with uh, it's it's May I need to prepare as much as possible for the uh, the the winter turns. So I'm going to. I, I hope this won't mess me up too much, but I am going to actually split my units. And I'm going to give him one of the artillery units as well. So that gives him a 272, and he's he's entrenched. So I think that's good enough to hold these guys back from taking lens. And then I am going to 23 days. As you can tell, it, it's really not going to be easy for me to get to Pilsen because the only roads go through to Prague and then to Pilsen so it's it's almost it's almost asking me to um, go to Prague first so that's what I'll do hopefully he will get there in 60 days which is two turns and I'm going to leave this guy in Linz there's supposed to be some uh, defensive fortifications in Linz and um, hopefully that's enough to um, keep them keep this keep this guy bottled up so and that's it wait a minute let's see what our message are messages are for the last turn the artillery unit arrived in Linz and it joined the Bukoy army and the upkeep of the units cost one and what was that I guess that was just telling me that I had created a a unit called Dampierre's Detachment. So let's save this turn and let's execute. Because I really don't have the money to do anything else. And there's not much else I can do at this time. This is still early in the game. It's still just a minor revolt. In, within the Holy Roman Empire, so there's not a lot to do. I'll let... New turn. Okay, it's still at 30 days. He's still active. This guy's active. And the Koi army has suffered eight hits from foul weather or exhaustion probably more like exhaustion because the weather is good and that's the only thing that happened in that turn so let's go ahead and execute another turn I really I, I don't know I mean I really can't do too much else at this point let's take a look at 
political states. It looks like um doesn't really tell you the name of the state. Oh, wait a minute, St. Poulton. No, that's the region name. They don't really tell you the name of the political states. And I'm not an expert on German uh, geography, especially during the 1600s, which, as we all know, the geography for all the countries within Europe changed pretty drastically over the course of you know, three or four hundred years due to wars being lost and wars being won. These are all Protestants, I guess. The Tam ones are loyal to the Holy Roman Empire. What I did was I clicked on the overlay that shows loyalties, and the dark yellow, I think, shows Protestant loyalty majority, and the Tam one is Holy Roman Empire uh, loyalty majority so I'm going to zoom back in because I think um, Tom had mentioned that it's very hard I think it was Tom it might be somebody else but somebody had mentioned it's very hard for them to read some of the fonts and for some reason this one is 88 percent loyal to Imperials in the middle of this sea of Protestants we still have the most loyalty in Pilsen. Yeah, I've already looked at the messages. There's really not much else to do. Let's go ahead and save. And wait, wait a minute. Terrain. Green terrain is forests, I guess, in clear weather. This dark brown is mountain. And you get some sort of defensive advantages, and actually, I think it tells you. Offensive, offensiveness and defensiveness. Irregular troops get 100%, are at 100% efficiency, I guess, in uh, um, mountain ranges. And regular are only at 55% efficiency at offensive actions, but 100% at def defensive actions. And as you go down the list, cavalry, artillery. So that tells you a little bit, and it tells you a little bit about frontage as well. Interesting. Frontage is a, is a, a concept that AJOD has developed is within a region, if two armies meet, the frontage is how many units are on the front line, basically. And so if you can get a commander that can command a frontage of, let's say, 12 at, as opposed to I'm just making these numbers up, but maybe the regular is 10 units on the front line as opposed to 12 units. That's a significant advantage because you basically have 12 fighting 10 because the other one can't get enough units into the line to fight you. So it, it gives you an advantage the wider your frontage is. And alternatively, if you're in a region where the frontage is severely res restricted or limited, um, a smaller force can hold off a bigger force. If you, you know, if you want to think of anything in in history that kind of models that, um, if you've ever watched the movie Three Hundred, which I know is not very historical, but it is about historical battle. The Greeks in that battle, the Battle of Thermopylae, Thermopylae, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. Um, they had a small space in which the Persians could come at them. So a very small force was able to hold off a much larger force. And I know that everybody knows probably that it wasn't just 300 Spartans. There were about 7,000 Athenians and, and um, some uh, troops from other uh, uh, Greek states. I can't remember all the other Greek states, but the Athenians and some of the uh, the Ithaca, I think, or, or in some of those other troops made up, you know, about 7,000 troops, and they had a small frontage, which they were able to defend against the, the much larger Persian army, which anybody, you know, the estimates went from 150,000 to 200 and something thousand and on up, and they held them off for a, a very long time, I mean, 
comparatively, obviously, you know, if they a small force like that holds them off for two or three weeks or two months or however long it was, that's a long time to hold off that large of a force. And they were able to do that. They eventually lost, of course, but it's that that kind of gives you an idea of what frontage means. If you are in the middle of a mountain pass and a large army can only come at you so many people at a time, that's that's the restrictions of frontage and it gives a smaller force a little bit more of an advantage in a situation like that so that's that's the concept behind frontage and in a clear region or well this is wooded I think the frontage is a little bit smaller in wooded wooded areas but in a clear region like um, these are all woods. Well, this one's clear. The, um, as you can see, the frontage is a lot larger, larger than it would be in wooded hills, where the front for the frontage is 50 for frontline units. Whereas in clear, uh, a clear region, it's 180. So you can see that there's a big difference between that. Um, I'm sure I didn't explain that very well, but it's uh, explained in detail on AJOT forums all the time. People ask about it constantly. It's it's kind of a mysterious kind of number and calculations behind the scenes in most AJOT games to figure out everything as it relates to units and unit strength and frontage and everything. Every one of these. Uh, you know, factors are, are thrown into a big pot and mixed around, and then you come up with the the uh, the battle results. So it's pretty interesting. I don't know if anybody knows exactly everything that goes into that, but I'm sure the programmers do. But I certainly can't. I've never completely figured it out. So now after I've bored you with about eight or nine minutes of talking about frontage let's save this turn and execute again I'm hoping this guy will make it to Prague oh he can scroll during the turn that's nice it looks yeah oh we got some income from Vienna oh nice 34 and 13 Oh, that's right. I did read on the forums that you get tax income twice a year. So, uh, that's good. I'm going to try to keep it down. I can hear people moving around outside. The Protestants have asked England for help. Tax income from Vienna. The Bukoy army suffered four hits. That's not very much. That is definitely workable. The keep of units and that's that and um, as you can tell Bukoy is not active this turn so he didn't make it he didn't make it in two turns it estimated 60 days but he became inactive on the second turn and so he only made it uh, 27 days worth of March he still has three days left to get to Vienna I mean Prague. So with this amount of money, I am going to actually buy some replacements because I really need them. And I think they can get, if you, I don't know if you noticed, oh look at that, this region has been pillaged. I might be misusing this uh, creation. They should probably be used more as a kind of a behind the lines uh, skirmisher, uh, pillager. Um, so I don't know. I might split them out if I learn more about them. But in the meantime, this guy looks like he's keeping off this, these Protestants. And so if we could take Prague they have within the city a several detachments 
one has a power of 92, one has a power of 31, and one has a power of 85. So that equals about 208 in power. And we're at 428 in power. So we should be able to handle any of the troops in Prague. So they probably will not march out to battle us. And... Um, I really want that Dragoons Regiment, but I don't really... I'm gonna buy it. I don't care. This is this is a, my first Let's Play of this, and I'm bound to make mistakes, and that's probably another mistake I've made, but we'll see. We'll see indeed. Okay. Uh, let's see what messages did or did I go through these already? Yes, I did. Okay. So we've looked over those. There really doesn't seem to be anything logical to play. And um, we've looked at our army units. Uh, production, yes. Military. Government, loyalty, diplomacy, objectives. See, look at their combat power now. They're at 41 compared to what I have. If England joins, I'm sure that will jump, and they'll be at more like 70 or 80 or more. This scenario will end in 1648 of December. Um, we're getting 159 victory points no oh, that's our total we're getting 16 points a turn and they're getting 13 points a turn it's partly because they have protest uh, not protestant uh, they, that's partly because they have pilsen I think maybe not but if I take Prague that's 7 I think that's uh, I wonder if that's 7 points per turn I'm, I know it's national morale but it might be 7 victory points per turn as well so let's go ahead and execute the turn and see what happens. And see, he's coming. Oh, he's got a pretty strong force. Where did he get those troops? All right. Well, seems weird that we have only 5,000 troops. I saw a unit over here. See, this is, this is what gets me. I'm partially unsupplied. Look at that. I'm in trouble there. Move him back. It takes 93 days to get back if I'm unsupplied and inactive. There are my Croatians, my dragoons, pillager, and light cavalry. So they're basically the same as before. Pillage there. We'll pillage them a little bit and see how they like it. All right, this has gone down a little bit. We're in decent shape on those two, which are supply and field artillery. Wait a minute. I can't really, I can't justify that. 14's barely going to get me to, 14 will get me to February fairly easily, but I can't justify any more than that. These guys, that's sad. I have no way of getting to them if I don't have any supply.
I guess I'll come if I do anything I'll come from I'll go across here maybe all right let's execute the turn That's bad. He's going to get destroyed if he gets caught out there like that. We may ask the Pope again for some money. Yes, indeed. We may ask the Pope for more money. We've already read that. Dragoon's regiment has arrived in Prashatiz, which is that. Bukoi army suffered four hits from foul weather. One money, Garrison of Brun has been raised. That's not good. That's not good at all. And he's unsupplied in Region Prague. That's because he doesn't have any supply in his little supply wagons. And these guys, let's see what we can do with them. No, no, no. This. Force march, evade combat, enter structure. All right, well, they they must automatically pill, pillage when they get ready to. We'll pillage them a little bit and see how they like it. I don't know what I'm going to do, though, because it's going to be very hard to march here. And I can't really tell how strong he is. So I might be in a little bit of trouble. Let's go ahead and save. F9. They've lost 4,900 men. We've lost 46, basically 47. Um, their combat power is at 59 now because they got this guy to join in, I believe. I didn't get a message that they got him to join, but historically, Bethlehem Gabor from the Transylvania, I believe, uh, he, joined the he joined the war on the Protestant side. So let's say that and go. Get my troops back to Budweiser so that they can be supplied. I wish he would be active. Wow. Gott mit uns! Ah. Because he's never active. He needs to be active. Let's see if we can't evade combat. Oh, can't do it if he's inactive, which he is. Uh, the Treaty of Munich, or Munchen, or Munchen, yeah, I think is how it's supposed to be pronounced instead of. Munchen. Munchen. Emperor Ferdinand visits Munich on his way from his election in Frankfurt. The growing crisis in Vienna makes him recognize the Liga, Liga and request their assistance. This establishes a legal basis for future Bavarian action. So that means that at some point, sometime soon, hopefully, I'm going to get an army and it'll be led by General Tilly. Or General McKay, I think, is his real name. Or maybe not McKay, but his uh, he's a Count of Tilly is what his title is. And he was a general. We have lost a battle against the Protestants in Beneschau. The 
because we are unsupplied and inactive. That is um, nice. We pillaged them and they're uh, Oh, that kind of hurts me, maybe. It says a slight uh, supply production penalty in neighboring cities. I wonder if that is at least one region over or if it's a city within the region. Either way, they, that is now a Holy Roman Empire region. It flipped loyalties or whatever it does. So, October, the winter's coming. Let's see. We'll get him down here and get him resupplied. Five more days. Messages. Dragoons Regiment has arrived in Chesky, Sesky, Chesky. Battle of Humane. Spanish reinforcements arrive. Oh, hello. Thank goodness. And so the Spanish have uh, sent us some reinforcements to help us out. They're under the leadership of General Maradas. Maradas. So that's a pretty strong formation, 471. Um, one of the ways you can tell how many troops, actual troops that should be, if you hover over the power icon of a unit, it'll show at the bottom the troop uh in real life men uh each of those units are 2500 across there the the infantry units so that's 7500 men uh and then two regiments or formations of 400 cavalry each so that's what 8300 men and then he is just the general is just one man so that's 8301 men it's not too bad though, 8,000 8, men or so. Uh, that'll hold off them. Kriange Musketeers. Combat power deadly. Nice. Um, Kriange Picaros, Picaros, Picaros. Combat power, good. They look like they are some kind of pike unit. Arcabucaros, those are arquebuses, I think is what they carry. Uh, combat power, superior. And then some more picaros, picaros. Three, uh, three regiments of picaros, which are pikemen, it looks like, and one... Regiment of Musketeers and one mech regiment of Arquebusiers, which I guess are not as good as muskets. That's all right. And then these guys are mounted cavalry that use, look like hand pistols or hand cannons. I love the, the artwork in this game. So let's go ahead and save this turn. I moved him to Bodwise to protect Bodwise and to cover him as he's retreating. He'll be he'll be in Bodwise in five days, and he'll be in Bodwise in twenty three days. So I was never able to take Pilsen back, but the. The war's still early, still young, still the first year. 
So let's execute another turn. I've done a lot more turns in this episode than I did in my first episode, but I'm kind of whipping through these turns a little bit quicker because there's there's just there's just not a lot to do early in the early in the war, obviously. So let's see, Prod the Protestant Union. Protestant Union meets at Frankfurt. They decide not to raise an army against the Emperor. Nice. Good. Thank you. Keep keep making that decision. The Liga meets in Würzburg. In December, the Liga meets in Würzburg for the first time since 1613 with Maximilian I of Bavaria at its head. They do agree to raise an army of 25,000 men. Membership is exclusively Catholic and predominantly Ecclesiastical. That's good news for us. Income from tax in Vienna. Oh, nice. We're getting taxed more often than I thought we would. Uh, the Bukoy Army reaches Budweiser. Oh, Bethlehem Gabor is in this region as well. And of course, both of my units are inactive. Maradris reinforcement suffers two hits from foul weather. Uh, that was that one. Used one money. The garrison of Bowise has been mustered. And then McCoy Army is partially unsupplied in region to Boer, which was this region. All right. I think I'm going to close this episode. Uh, episode 2 of my Let's Play 30 Years War. I think I'll do a Let's Play of Revolution Under Siege um, because I'm sure some people are wondering if I'm ever going to finish that. And I, I do, um, I really like this game a little bit more than Revolution Under Siege, but I still like playing Revolution Under Siege as, as, as well. I'm going to save that turn and then I'm going to shut this off. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is Gilmer and I'm signing off. Thanks a lot.